Hello guys, in this video I'm going to introduce you to SignalR package uh, which is used to accomplish two-way communication between the browser and the server. So usually when we are communicating uh, from the browser to the server we are using the HTTP communication which is one side only. So we can send requests from the client which is the browser to the application which is on the back end of the server. But what, what is impossible is to send a message or request from the backend, from the server, to the client's browser. So this is the problem which is solved by using SignalR, and I'm going to show you how to accomplish it. This tutorial is based on the official Microsoft Docs uh, article, which is uh, linked in the description. So if you want the, the code, uh, you can find it there. Um, I will use a slightly changed code in this uh, in this uh, example, but uh, the whole comp concept stays the same. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new project. So let's select ASP.NET Core Web Application. Let's click Next. Let's uh, type Create. This is going to create the ASP.NET Core Web Application for us. And uh, I will be using .NET Core 5 uh, and I will choose the ASP.NET Core Web App template and I will disable the configure for HTTPS uh, option. So in a few seconds it will create the project. So the first thing we need to do is to add the uh, SignalR front side package to this solution. So let's right click on the solution or on the, on the project rather. Let's go to the add and client side library. And I will use uh, providers unpackage, UN package, and then the library. Um, I will type the at Microsoft signal R at latest. I will provide the link in the description to this uh, the Microsoft Docs site where you can find all these uh, things that I copied. So let's choose specific files. I will choose this uh, browser SignalRJS and SignalR MinJS, and the target location will be just as in this docs docs uh, site. I will use www root js signalr and then install. And we have successfully installed this uh, package. So the first thing we need to do is to create a hub. So I've created a new file, notificationshub.cs, in the hubs directory. And uh, it is a very simple class, which is public. It's called notifica notifications hub. It extends the hub uh, class from the Microsoft ASP.NET Core.SignalR namespace. It has one method, which is asynchronous, a method called send notification. This method, this is the place where we are defining the methods on the server side, which will be invoked from the client side. So from within our browser, we will be, we will be able to invoke this method on the server side. So um, we have one parameter, which is string notification. And what we are doing inside of this method is basically invoking send async method from the uh, signal our package. So we are invoking from within this method the method from the client side called receive notification and we are passing one parameter which is the string notification. So we have two side communication between the client and the server. The client will be invoking the send notification method on the server side and the server will be invoking the receive notification method on the client side. So the next step we need to do is to go to the startup.cs file. Uh, we are using the signalrchat.hubs namespace and we are uh, adding two lines. So within the configure services method we will invoke the services.addSignalR. It is used to start the SignalR process within our web application. And then within the configure method, there is this app.use endpoints invocation where, where we can add the endpoints.maphub, notifications hub, slash notifications hub. So we are basically connecting this type of pattern, which will be used to access this hub, with the physically defined hub in our code, notifications hub. 
the next step is importing the JS files. So let's go to the pages shared underscore layout dot CSHTML and there, there we can import the two script files. So the first one is uh, the script file for the signal R. So this is the, the path. And the second one will be a script file created by us. So it will be slash JS slash, slash notifications.js. Uh, we will create this uh, this file soon. So let's create the uh, actual uh, changes in the index.cshtml file. So we are creating our view. So I left the basic definitions of add page and add model from the auto-generated uh, content of this file. And I've added uh, one div with the class text center, which contains two divs. The first one will have a header send notification with one text input with identifier notification input and placeholder notification content and then it will be used to input the notification content and then we have the button with id send notification button to send the notification to the server uh, to the server and then the second div will be used to um, display the notifications that we have received from the server it has one h1 header receive notification uh, and one unordered list with identifier notifications list. Let's see how it looks. So here is the first div where we have the input and the button and then we have the second div but there are no notifications uh, right now so uh, let's develop this solution further. The content of the notifications.js file which uh, I, I have created within the JS notifications.js file. So um, let's go through the contents. We are using the strict rule set of JavaScript. Then we are um, defining a variable called connection. We are using new builder dot with, with URL slash notifications hub dot build to build the connection to this hub slash notifications hub. This, this is the pattern which we have defined within the uh, startup.cs file here. So slash notifications hub is pointing onto the notifications hub class that we have defined on the server side. So uh, firstly, we are using document.getElementById send notification button dot disabled equals true. So uh, here we are disabling the, the button because, because it should be disabled um, until the connection is, 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 is ready to use to be used. So then connection.on receive notification. So we are basically defining what is going to happen when we will receive the notification from the server side. So server side can invoke the receive notification method on the uh, or other function on the front side and here we are defining what is going to happen then so we are creating new list item by uh, using document.createElementLI list item then we are using document.getElementById notifications list which is the list of notifications that we have created in the layout.cshtml file and then we are using appendChildLI so uh, we will add new list item element to the notifications list and we are setting this this list item text content to the notification which is received from the backend uh, through this parameter so um, then we are using connection.start then and we are creating new function document.getElementById send notification button disabled equals false so we are enabling the button when the connection is started then we are catching the error if there is anything going wrong we will just uh, display error onto the console then we are using document.getElementById send notification button dot add event listener click and then we are passing the function so we are basically implementing the click event on the send notification button. This console log test is, is not 
not uh, required here, so I will delete this. So we are creating a new variable notification. We are setting it to document.getElementById notification input.value. So we are uh, assigning, uh, so we are getting the notification input from our HTML. And then we are we're going to use connection.invoke send notification and pass this notification, which is from the input. Uh, that we have passed uh, through the browser. So uh, this is the place when the front side is going to invoke send notification method on the backend side, which is defined in the notifications hub.cs file. If there is any error, we will catch it and output it onto the console. And then we are using event.prevent default to prevent the, uh, the default. Uh, the default behavior of the button. So this is the basic implementation of, of this whole concept. And let's see how it works. It works, there's the test list item added and I can use this multiple times. I can change this. So it works as expected and we have implemented successfully the SignalR with ASP.NET Core application. So I hope that you like this video, that it has explained the concept of SignalR to you. And if you have any questions or any, any video ideas, please type this in the comment section and I will definitely answer to them. And I hope to see you soon in the future videos.